Hello and welcome to this video on corn syrup in brewing. Corn syrup is an interesting alternative to table sugar. You will find it listed in the ingredients of many common beverages such as cola, energy drinks and especially in shelf stable foods like those in your local grocers. When looking for it you may find it under the name of maltodextrin. One point of clarification, although called corn syrup it is often in a powdered form. This contrary naming can be a problem in identification. It is derived from corn and is primarily composed of starch and other longer, more complex saccharide chains, generally a combination of malt and dextrin, a complex sugar consisting of chains of dextrose molecules. These cannot be metabolized by yeast without enzyme involvement, something the yeast cell does not normally have the capacity for. One manufacturer describes it as soluble, low sweetness, and easily digestible in reference to humans. These two factors play into why and how to use corn syrup, and why it is used in a vast array of commercial products. It is distinct from corn sugar, which is also known as dextrose. Dextrose will be covered in its own video in the near future. In brewing, corn syrup is used to add volume, body, sweetness, and head. The reasons for this are as follows. As far as volume goes, it is rather obvious. Adding volume in the form of liquid or dry corn syrup will increase the volume of the wash. More than that, it has the immediate problem of being mostly indigestible by yeast. As it is not broken down, the added corn syrup is retained intact and not lost from the wash volume. Although described as a problem, it's not necessarily accurate. Since it is a solid, or syrup, added to a liquid, the result is a thickened beer, generally. The density and greater volume of sugar alters the mouthfeel, which may be a desirable outcome. This feature can be, and often is used, to make copies of commercial beer. The addition of corn syrup to the range of possible beer flavours can shift the body description, generally upwards, from light to medium and then full-bodied, with the addition of greater volumes. This is especially useful in low gravity beers. The mass is useful for making up the watery and weak body and filling it, but that has problems with sweetness. This effect can be counted by carbonation, and that will be discussed last. Sweetness. No, not a new stripper name, but the problematic flavour that is caused by corn syrup. Beer is generally a delicate balance of the bitter hops flavour and residual sugars. When you add corn syrup, there is a disproportionate amount of these residuals which make it overly sweet. This is caused by the lack of yeast digestion, this is coupled with the development of body within the beer. The reasons for the sweetness is the human mouth produces amylases and other enzymes for digestion. This leads to sugars being freed from the maltodextrin structure in your mouth, particularly freeing maltose and glucose. These create a sweet sensation. These smother the hop flavours, or can create an unwanted liquid candy flavour. If you're going for that, do everyone a favour and just buy a Moscato. Next is the beer head. Beer head being the frothy bit at the top of the glass, made from carbonation bubbles. You may wonder how the use of corn syrup affects head, and this is related to the complex structure of the maltodextrin, especially the maltose part. This is a good facilitator of surfactants. These are partially responsible for bubble formation. By increasing the amount or the efficacy of surfactant activity, you get better bubble formation. This leads into the second effect. The maltodextrin forms a film in commercial applications, and clearly, more of a thin film will create more opportunity for bubble formation. The final effect is the delayed fermentation of maltodextrin. Some of the sugars will be fermented, but very late in the process. This means that it probably occurs after the primary fermentation is finished. This is a result that is much like priming for carbonation. As mentioned earlier, the product of maltodextrin, where it is not fermented out entirely, or by the incorporation of enzymes, is an overly sweet brew. Carbonation counters this to a degree. This sweetness is a measure known as Brix. That is B-R-I-X, not the other one. 
A calculator for the amount of carbonation is included in the description below. But in short, this is a measurement of how much sugar is dissolved in 100 grams of water or wash. By comparing the bricks, you can carbonate to add acid to the brew and counteract that sweetness to a degree. Limitations are an apparent factor from what has been said so far. For aesthetic reasons, maltodextrin should be used very sparingly, and less than 200 grams per wash, or a standard wash more accurately. If you do more than that, it can cause chill haze in particularly light beers, and rather obviously, a darker beer can absorb more of this over time. Nonetheless, avoiding it is better. This is for the second reason, and that is the flavour and sweetness. By adding maltodextrin, you can completely shunt the flavour and sweetness in the wrong direction, therefore avoiding it is best. And again, it can completely skew light or medium beers in their body, and so a pale ale and some lagers should be avoided when using maltodextrin to keep the balance of the body. Hopefully this has given you some idea of what corn syrup does in brewing, and why it is used by some copies of major beer brands. Thank you for watching this video. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions you may have below.